It's time to rise and shine. It's time to be about that business. It's time to understand that if you want to get something out of your life, you've got to be willing to work for it. I'm talking to the one that wants to go beyond the limit. I'm talking to the one that is willing to work a little bit harder than the next man or the next woman. I'm talking to the one that's been through hell. I'm talking to the one that really wants to take it to that level that no one has ever been. When you step into that room, when you step into that environment, you got to be hungry enough to eat what is coming your way. You cannot be concerned about what can't be done. You need to be focused on what must be done. If you feel that you are not in a position to do it, then why show up in the first place? What's going on? Here we are, Benzie's Bit, Episode 2. So welcome in. Thank you guys for watching. Um, For our listeners on RTF Sports Network, thank you for listening in. Um, Episode two. So hopefully we're making some headway from episode one. Very excited about this. Um, Let's see here. So we're going to start it off first and foremost by Benzie's Buzz. All right. So what Benzie's Buzz is, it's basically going to be current events that are happening in the United States. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is going to be the tragic death of George Floyd. Uh, Four Minneapolis police officers linked to the death of George Floyd, a man who died after a police officer pinned his knee against the suspect's neck as he struggled to breathe, were fired Tuesday. Um, When Mayor Fry appointed me as chief of the Minneapolis Police Department, I was very steadfast and strong on what our department vision, values, and culture change would be moving forward. One of those pillars is sanctity of life. That was from Chief Arredondo. He also stated, we know there are inherent dangers in the profession of policing, but the vast majority of the work we do never require us to use force. The incident, which was caught on film, caused a huge uproar and prompted calls for dismissal almost immediately. The FBI also has been called to investigate the incident. Very tragic. I don't know um, if you guys have watched the video, but uh, it was definitely something to take back. I mean, 10 seconds into it, you're kind of like, holy cow, you know, you've got these people that are filming it and they're not really saying anything because they're intimidated by the police themselves, um, which shouldn't be the case. You know, if if you're not doing anything wrong, you should not be afraid of the police. Um, They were saying that George uh, had the, he was trying to pass off a counterfeit $20 bill. Did he know about this at the time? No one knows. Um, But the big thing is just realizing that the use of force wasn't necessary. I mean, the gentleman had his hands in his pockets at the time that he was on the ground with being pinned by his knee of the police officer. So very tragic there. Um, Definitely hard to watch. So that is the first headline of Benzie's Buzz. The second one is... A New Jersey salon owner said on Fox and Friends Wednesday that hundreds of salons in the state plan to reopen on June 1st, despite the governor's executive order. I know this is New Jersey. I'm here in Minnesota, but still, as you guys can see that are watching, the hair is very long right now, very interested in things and topics such as this. Um, There was quoted that There has been such a huge disconnect in communication, and there are so many small businesses, not just the beauty industry, that are at the end of their rope. The owner of Panico Salon and Spa in Ridgewood stated that. He also stated um, that he is only one of a thousand salon owners who came together to craft their own plans for reopening. So really striving around and going around the governor's 
um, executive order because they need to get open. And me personally, I am bread man, right? So I work for the bread union. I'm delivering bread to stores like Walmart, Cub Foods here in Minnesota, um, big retailers for grocery. And for those stores to be open with the hundreds of people in there at a time, definitely not six feet apart, um, for those to be open and have that ability to do so, small businesses that can limit people in, how many are in there at a time, things like that, there is no reason, in my opinion, why they shouldn't have the option to strive during these tough times. Uh, so that's very, very difficult situation, but I applaud them. Um, Greg Bauman, who does Green Bay Greg's show, stated just now that you, he, he's saying that he thinks his hair looks amazing. That's because Mike Reeves, who does Mike on the Mike, uh, cuts his hair. So he has that privilege. Congratulations, Greg. It does look great, as do you. Um, Greg's actually currently working on gaining some weight. Yes, you heard it here. He is trying to gain weight. I'm sitting over here starving myself <laughs> to try to lose some pounds before my upcoming wedding, which is in September, um, the day after I turn 30. So my birthday is September 18th. I will be turning the dirty 30. And the day after that, I will be getting married. Uh, Austin May, one of my groomsmen just said, unreal in all caps, you're telling me, Austin, unbelievable. So on to our third topic for the buzz this week. It is going to be on Tropical Storm Bertha. First and foremost, the name Bertha. That sounds like a heavier set individual. Uh, so we'll go with that. Tropical Storm Bertha formed near the coast of South Carolina on Wednesday morning. Bertha's main threat will be heavy rain spreading northward from South Carolina towards North Carolina and Western Virginia. Flash flooding is possible since soils are already saturated by recent rainfall in some of those areas. And don't forget there will be rough surf and dangerous rip currents that come along with Bertha. I know Mike Reeves was talking about Outer Banks and that show on Netflix. Well, there was a part in the beginning of that show where they were out surfing the tides. So uh, good for them. Anybody out in the Carolinas, I do not recommend going surfing during Bertha. Big Bertha's coming through. So that is going to be our buzz for the week. Now on to bigger and better things. Benzie's big news. So we got some news finally that some sports are going to be starting back up. And this one actually comes with a plan. The NHL will abandon the rest of their regular season and go straight into the playoffs. Thank you, Lord. Uh, this is going to be a 24-team playoff instead of 16, and as long as it is available to resume. Uh, the commissioner, Gary Bettman, stated, as we seek some return to normalcy, this is an important day for NHL fans. Bettman also stated, since March 12th, we've been hopeful and optimistic that by developing all options and alternatives, we could get to this point. I know I join sports fans everywhere when I say we cannot wait for the players to hit the ice. Indeed. Bettman also went into detail, you know, said Chicago, Columbus, Dallas, Edmonton, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Minneapolis, Pittsburgh, Toronto, and Vancouver are being considered as hubs. The hubs would have to be secure arenas, hotels, and practice facilities, and there would be aggressive COVID-19 testing and protocol at each site. The big thing is just realizing that if you can, if you can test these players first and foremost when they get there and make sure they don't have corona, and then seclude them to hotels with other people who are have been tested you can you can take away the variable of somebody spreading it. If everybody doesn't have it and they're not coming in contact with anybody that hasn't already been tested, then your success rate should go up and you shouldn't have to have any breakdowns. I know uh, like a week ago when UFC, they did testing before their fight 
and one of the fighters tested positive, right? Well, rather than freak out and say, well, we've got to call this all off, they didn't do that. You know, they paused, they thought about what's the best outcome for this, and they just simply removed that fighter and then continued on with the fights. Uh, I think that's going to be paramount for any of these sports um, franchises that are going to start back up is that you're going to have people that have it or come down with it. Or, I mean, I get the secluding part of it. Hopefully you can get that troubleshoot that out of it. But if you do have somebody that comes down with it, doesn't mean you have to shut the doors. It doesn't mean you have to quarantine every single person. Um, it gets tough. There's a fine line. And a lot of these players in a lot of different leagues aren't really necessarily wanting to go back and risk it. But the diehards are like, it's my job. If there is people on the front lines that are working and having this risk, why shouldn't we do our duty to bring hope and entertainment to the people around the world? So I think that's huge. Um, another thing on the hockey starting back up is that with the playoff, it's going to be the top four teams in each conference ranked by point percentage, Boston, Tampa Bay, Washington, Philadelphia. And then in the East, it's St. Louis, Colorado, Vegas, and Dallas will play a separate round robin tournament determining their seeds for the first round. So they're already in, but they're going to do a separate round robin tournament to determine where they will be seated. I think that's pretty interesting. Um, I was listening to Jason Zucker. He was a former Minnesota Wild forward and he is actually playing for Pittsburgh now and he was talking about how it's almost like you you're going to have these separate tournaments that come into one big tournament right um obviously Pittsburgh is going to attempt to play to get in since they're a number 5 seed um so here are some of the other teams in the east the play in series matchups would be number 5 Pittsburgh versus number 12 Montreal number 6 Carolina versus number 11, the New York Rangers. Number seven, the New York Islanders versus number 10, Florida. And number eight, Toronto versus number nine, Columbus. Um, so those are just that, that's simply just putting it as the East. I think that's a lot of good matchups. And I think it's going to be not only good matchups, but great hockey as well. I mean, playoff hockey is always awesome, but to have these guys coming back. Yeah, sure. Their stamina may not be there, but just the hunger to play some puck. I mean, you can already see just by the, the match that was just on for golf over the weekend, how many people watch these sporting events, how many sports fans are hungry for anything. Me personally, I'm not going to watch Korean baseball. I think of it more of like minor league baseball. And it may be if I'm at the field, I'm going to watch it. But when it comes to these huge leagues like NHL, NFL, NBA, um, even if you got NASCAR, I mean, I'll watch it. Um, so that's interesting in of itself. Then we're going to go over to the West. This is where it hits home for me simply because I'm a Minnesota Wild fan. I'll get to their matchup here in a second. But to start it off, you will have the number five seed, the Edmonton Oilers, versus number 12, Chicago. That's interesting because Chicago is one of the teams that was dog crap this year, and yet they're still signed, sliding in. Now, they're a 12 seed. Minnesota's a 10 seed. I know Minnesota didn't play very well this year, but obviously I'm a homer, so therefore I want them to be in. Then the next matchup, you have the number six, Nashville Predators, against number 11, Arizona. That's going to be an awesome matchup. Then you have Vancouver Canucks at the number seven seed. They're squaring off against my Minnesota Wild. And switching out of matchups here for a second, you know, they talked about, we talked about the hubs and how they're trying to figure out the two places where they can have the East and the West square off. The thing about it is Minnesota and St. Paul, our facilities are great for media right? Not only that, but it would all match up. But do you give a team like Minnesota or Toronto, Pittsburgh, Vegas, places like that, you have to have one team in here that's going to get a home home field advantage, which is very tough. You know, are you going to give a team an edge to be in this playoff? Do you, if it's in Minnesota, do you make the Minnesota Wild suit up in the 
in the visitor's locker room. Um, obviously, there won't be fans, but still, I mean, they know that ice. They know the things about it. So that will be interesting to see what happens. Uh, the last matchup in the West is going to be number eight, Calgary, against number nine, Winnipeg. Winnipeg is one of our big rivals here in Minnesota. So I think that um, it always happens where we usually meet up with them. Uh, Calgary is also a very talented team as well. Um, so that is what we have for the upcoming NHL season. Very excited on this end to see that happen. Um, can't wait. So next, we're going to transition a little bit into some football for Benzie's breakdown of the week. Now, my breakdown is going to be very focused on PPR fantasy sports and exclusively the quarterback position. So for the quarterback position, I'm going to deep dive a little bit. And I'm going to deep dive into my top 10. Now, I did do a way too early top five um, for quarterback on Twitter. You can follow me at Twist Benz. Um, don't be afraid to do that. Also, Benzie's Bit has one. Go ahead and follow Twist um, Mike. It's going to be great. So make sure you're following us all on social media. Make sure you're liking us on Facebook. And make sure you're listening to us on rtfsportsnetwork.com. Um, that's going to be a huge one. You know, we you can see it if you're watching right now. I have the icon for RTF. That's Raise the Flag Network. Um it's a bunch of great shows about sports, about a bunch of different things. But the big thing is that they give people like me, Mike, and Greg an outlet to produce entertainment for our family, friends, new friends, Twist Nation, things like that. Um, that's huge for us because this is a dream of ours to be able to talk, sit around and talk about sports and other things and give our opinion on it and be heard. I think that's a big thing with American culture is we want to be able to express our opinions and we want to be heard. That's the key to this all. Um, so I appreciate everyone listening to this, everyone sharing this, everyone liking it, everyone listening to Twist as well. But make sure you go to rtfsportsnetwork.com and give it a listen. Check out the shows. Um, really express the ones that you like and the ones that you don't. We're always here for criticism and constructive criticism at that. So for the breakdown, like I said, we're getting into quarterbacks. At number 10, I have Tampa Bay's Tom Brady. Okay, the GOAT. I will express him as the GOAT until otherwise. I mean, dude's got more, more rings than Thanos, so let's bring it in. So with the weapons that Tom Brady has, he has Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Rob Gronkowski, and O.J. Howard, to name a few. Now, in all these... Uh, players that I'm going to go through. That's just some of the weapons. People can bash them, but that's just some of their weapons. The weakness for Tom Brady this season will be the running back position. Um, he's never been known really for having elite like RB1 or RB2 um, type guys in the backfield, but that will be his weakness this year. Um, last season, he was ranked as QB12 with 16.5 points per game. All right, so that is number 10, Tom Brady. Number nine, once again, guys, I'm a homer. I try to keep that out of it, but at number nine, I do have Kirk Cousins. Captain Kirk Cousins. All right, his weapons this season will include Delvin Cook, Adam Thielen, Kyle Rudolph, and Justin Jefferson. His weaknesses will be young depth at wide receiver and he needs to have O-line chemistry this season, which is always tough. It's always a glaring thing. I think it's a glaring thing from the majority of NFL teams, but being a Vikings fan, if you listen to the local radio, it's constantly bashing the offensive line. So I'm hoping that that really meshes this year and they can build some chemistry. Um, I think that'll be great. So at number nine, Kirk Cousins. At number eight, Dak Prescott. His weapons are Zeke, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb, and Blake Jarwin. Keep Blake Jarwin in your mind for when I do the tight ends in the coming week. His weaknesses is going to be coaching changes, 
as well as the constant drama affiliated with the Dallas Cowboys. Last season, Dak was QB number two, and he averaged 21.1 points per game. At number seven, we have Josh Allen. His weapons include Diggs, John Brown, Devin Singletary, and Dawson Knox. His weaknesses are they are very thin at running back, especially with the loss of Frank Gore, the immortal one, the one that never goes away, Mr. Infinite. Um, so the thin RB depth is going to be his weakness this season. Last season, he was QB6 with 18 points per game. At number six, we have Russell Wilson. I know that's pretty far down the list for Russ. His weapons this season will include Chris Carson, the recent acquired Carlos Hyde, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, Philip Dorsett, Greg Olson, and Will Disley. His weaknesses, um, I would say his weaknesses, and I have this for another one, is the possibility of playing without fans at home. I think that's huge for the Seattle Seahawks is that stadium and how loud it can be, how much energy you would get as a player stepping onto that home field. And that that could be the majority of teams, but I will say for sure for Seattle. Last season, he was QB3 with 20.5 points per game. And this is all PPR scoring as well, so keep that in mind. At number five, I have Drew Brees. His weapons this season will include Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, Jared Cook, and of course, the bigger Lamar Jackson of Taysom Hill. Uh, his weaknesses will be, for me, I, I, I wonder, and this goes with any veteran quarterback who's pushing into the old age bracket, is will this be the decline of Drew? That it's hard to come up with a weakness for for the Saints. I mean, that's that's what I'm gonna say. If he declines this season, and plus you have the drama of just the quarterback controversy, who's gonna be there for when he's gone? Is it gonna be Taysom? Um, you know, things of that nature. Last year, Drew was quarterback 21. He was still putting up 20.4 fantasy points per game. The injury didn't help his QB ranking in fantasy. At number four, I have Carson Wentz. His weapons this year residing is Miles Sanders, Alshon Jeffrey, Deshaun Jackson, Jalen Rieger, Zach Ertz, and Dallas Goddard, that twin, um, the twin tight end combo there. His weaknesses, old receiving core that's injury prone. Um, I'm glad that they did get Rieger. Unfortunately, I'm not a big Philly fan, but at least they got some youth into that wide receiver depth. And that is his. Now for Carson last season, he was QB 10, averaging 17.2 points per game. So that's where I have him at number four. So just a recap quickly here. I had Tom Brady at 10, Kirk Cousins at nine, Dak Prescott at eight, Josh Allen at seven, Russell Wilson at six, Drew Brees at five, and Carson Wentz at four. Top three here at number three, I have Kyler Murray. Weapons this year include Kenyon Drake, DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk, Larry Fitzgerald, Holy Angels Academy alum, Minnesota native. And then you also have tight end Max Williams, a gopher starting at tight end for the cards. The weakness this year, the struggle of turning a franchise around. They've done well in acquiring talent and filling needs, but is that enough to turn a struggling franchise around? I think Kyler will do very well this year, not just on his feet, but also slinging the rock. I think the height issue with him wasn't as glaring as most thought simply because he can get out of the pocket. So that's interesting to see. I think he'll put up great numbers, especially with DeAndre Hopkins out there now. That dude is a monster. At number two, I have Lamar Jackson. Many people are spinning number one and number two around, but I have Lamar at number two. His weapons include Mark Ingram, J.K. Dobbins, who was drafted this season, Hollywood Brown, and Mark Andrews. Um, the 
Weaknesses for him this season is going to be thin depth at wide receiver. But not only that, I just have a feeling that I'm not going to, you know, nuzzle it down to the Madden curse, but I have a feeling that Lamar, you know, with any guy that's rushing that much and getting out of the pocket that much, there's so much risk in that. And especially with an injury related to that risk. So I have him at number two. I necessarily will not be reaching for a quarterback this season. Um, That's just my point of view and many others. I feel like fantasy wise, I can get a quarterback. Well, now you think about it last year with Lamar, he was QB one. He was putting up 27.7 points per game in fantasy. That's crazy. And there's obviously going to be decline on that number, but that's, Amazing. You know, that's shattering records in the fantasy world, but I still am going to have him at number two. At number one, Patrick Mahomes, the most elite and entertaining quarterback I think I've ever watched. Hands down, just what he can do at such a young age already and with the weapons he has. Now, he had Damian Williams, Tyree Kill, Sammy Watkins, who's always a question mark. You never know what he's going to do. And you got McCole Hardman. And of course, Travis Kelsey. But the addition of Clyde Edwards Hilaire, that pushed him for me into the number one. Just to see that he wanted him to be drafted. He wanted Clyde on the on the team, and that's who they gave him. I think that's only gonna promote his energy. And I think he'll do big things this year once again. The weakness I have for him, as well as for Russell Wilson, was no crowd in attendance. Arrowhead in of itself is known to get rock in. It's known to have all the noise. And I know they may pump in crowd noise, which I kind of hope that they do as a fan just to make it more fair, especially if fans do come towards the end of the season. I think that they can do something, whether it be decibel levels from past games, past plays, we've got the technology to do so. I'm a fan of pumping in crowd noise. Last season, Patrick Mahomes was QB7 and averaged 20.5 points per game. It also didn't help that he had the injuries. So that's all I have for this week, gang. I appreciate you all checking in. Please don't be afraid to go to RTF Sports Network and listen in to all the other shows, but also go ahead and check out Twist Sports Talk. Dot com and listen in to Twist Live on Saturdays. Thank you very much. God bless.